Today, folks, we've got the heavyweight championship of gins from Scotland. We've got two of the absolute most famous gins going up against each other head to head. We've got the Hendrix gin versus the Botanist gin. I'd be very surprised if you haven't heard of these gins before. You're pretty much going to find them in any bar and any bottle store you can find around the world. But maybe you actually haven't tried them before. Well, we're going to do the hard work for you. We're going to taste them. We're putting them through their paces and we're starting right now. G'day folks, my name's Tim. Welcome back to Tim and Tonic, where we discover the world's best gins and how to drink them. So guys, first gin we have up is a Hendrix. All the points you need to know, it's 41.4% alcohol and it retails for around $70 Australian. The Hendrix gin is really famous for adding cucumber and rose after the distillation. Now for this reason, you can't actually call it a London dry gin, but it is very delicious all the same. And that cucumber and rose is really the hero of this gin. Hendrix gin really is a modern classic. Classic. It changed the face of gin forever with that little slice of cucumber that, you know, nowadays we all talk about garnish pairings and tonic pairings. These guys were the first ones to really be doing it. So up against Hendrix, we have the Botanist Gin. Now this one weighs in at a hefty 46% ABV. So a little bit more, 5 to 6% than the Hendrix. So I'm expecting this one to pack a little bit more of a punch and a little bit more flavor. As for price, this one comes in an RRP of around $85 Australian, although I did manage to sneak this one in at 75 bucks when it was on special but with that extra ABV that extra alcohol content you do expect to pay a little bit more for the gin now what's so special about the botanist well it comes from a little island called Isla which is super famous for its single malt scotch whiskey you know all those really big and smoky ones that's where it comes from. Now the gin isn't smoky, so don't panic, but it does use a whopping 22 botanicals that are foraged from Isla, that little island just off the coast of Scotland. And also another nine botanicals on top of that, you know, your more classic kind of gin botanicals. So loads of botanicals, that extra kick of ABV. I'm expecting this one to be a massive flavor packed bomb compared to the Hendrix. But enough talking, let's get on to the tasting. That's what we're all here for. Let's start with the Hendrix and give it a smell. Now, I've tried Hendrix quite a number of times and the thing that always gets me is that rose. I really do find that the rose is much, much stronger than the cucumber. Everyone talks about the cucumber with Hendrix, but that kind of rose water floral profile, it's always what I think is the absolute strongest. I don't know, maybe I'm just more sensitive to floral flavors. I always seem to really easily pick them out, but the cucumber is definitely there. Not as strong as the rose, but it's definitely present. I get this really almost sweet melon-like vibe from the cucumber. Now, as I go back to it, it's definitely a more contemporary style of gin. Those cucumber and rose are 100% the strongest flavors that I detect on the smell, but there is a nice little subtle character in your traditional gin-like smells, like juniper and citrus, but they just are there for balance. They're definitely not the stars of the show. But enough smelling, let's give it a taste. Oh, the first thing that strikes me is how easy to drink this gin is. Like, sipping it neat, it just goes down so easily. You know, that cucumber just kind of gives this little bit of sweetness, which just rounds everything out and makes it super approachable. I could just sip on it like this. Again, on the taste, this gin does what it says on the tin. I find that rose super punchy. You know, the cucumber adds that mouthfeel, but it doesn't add a lot of flavor. I get more of the rose on the palate. Again, that more perfume potpourri kind of flavor profile. But what is really nice is that juniper and citrus kind of classic gin profile comes through a little bit stronger on the taste. Overall, the Hendrix, it's really good. I mean, super easy drinking. It's possibly one of the smoothest, easiest drinkers out there. I can see exactly why Hendrix has a lot of mass appeal and people absolutely love it. But it might not pack quite as much of a punch as you hardcore gin lovers and juniper freaks out there would want. Alrighty, so enough about Hendrix. Let's get on and give the botanist a crack. Oofed. Okay, so first thing with the botanist, there's definitely a lot more going on here than with the Hendrix. It's much brighter and it's much fresher too. There's three things here that really jump out to me on the smell. There's some juniper, citrus, and also some floral notes, kind of like a chamomile tea. Oh, I really like this one. The more I come back to it, the more I enjoy it. It's got a really great sense of balance. It's definitely a classic style gin with that slight little twist, which makes it unique. I'm really excited to try this one. Let's hope it lives up to that on the taste. Okay, wow, the botanist is definitely a little bit stronger than Hendrix. After all, it is that four to 5% more alcohol, but they do a really good job. It's got a really beautiful, creamy kind of a texture, which smooths out the kind of mouthfeel, makes it easier drinking. 
but maybe not quite as easy drinking as the Hendrix. The bloodness is super fresh with lots of juniper, kind of like pine needles, and a bit of a cool, fresh mint kind of feeling. After that, I get a good whack of citrus and spice, kind of like fresh lemon peels and nutmeg with a little bit of ginger too. One thing that stands out to me is I can taste this gin for ages. It's still coming through now, but it gets really much more floral and light on the finish, which is just amazing. It just adds another layer of flavor there. There's just so much complexity in this gin, but it's all really well balanced. It's actually quite incredible. Now I know most of my viewers out there, you're probably not drinking straight gin just like this. So I've got a little bit of tonic here. We've got Fever Tree, classic Indian. Let's keep it classic and give it a little splash in both of these gins and let's see how it stands up to a little bit of tonic because after all I'm pretty sure most of you are drinking like that or in cocktails not drinking it straight. Let's give the Hendrix a crack first. Okay so this one is very straightforward again rose cucumber it's all about that. I really do like the cucumber coming through a little bit stronger on this one so bring that out with a garnish as they do kind of makes sense. But overall super easy drinking you can imagine on a hot summer's day out in the sun just drinking loads of these. Let's see how the botanist stacks up. Okay, wow. Yeah, definitely it punches through the tonic a little bit more. It has still all those different layers of flavor. It just works amazingly well. It's got that really nice kind of juniper and citrus traditional gin character coming through, plus some sweet spice too. And don't forget those light, delicate floral notes. Now, before we announce the winner of this taste test, let me know down in the comments what you think of these two gins, which one is your absolute favorite. Now, the moment you've been waiting for, the final verdict, which gin is the best? Now I will preface this with, I do really think that both gins are great. They have their own different strong points and good for their own different reasons. I feel like the Hendrix is really great if you want that everyday drinker. It's super easy, it's super approachable, it's not gonna offend anyone. You just don't have to think about it. It's really a much more affordable price. But I do think that that rose and cucumber, you know, there's gonna be a small percentage of the population that just don't like those flavors, which obviously they're quite strong in this one, so it's not gonna be for everyone. But all in all, it's gonna be pretty mass appealing and super easy drinking for most people. But a little bit of a drum roll here because the botanist gets my vote as the winner. Why? Well, yes, it is a little bit more expensive, 15 Australian dollars more expensive, but that's around what, like five to seven US dollars, pounds, wherever you are in the world. So not that much more, but you get so much more flavor for that money. It really cuts through whatever you mix with it, as demonstrated here with the tonic. It's got everything you want. It's got that classic gin profile. It's got that modern floral edge. It's just really delicious and can stand up to anything you want to throw at it. But really, there's no wrong choice here. They're both good in their own different ways. So guys, if you like this review and want to discover more amazing gins just like these two, start right now by clicking subscribe just up here so you don't miss out on any new reviews as they come out in the channel. In the meantime, click through the playlist here and you'll see all the reviews that I've already done. Until next time guys, I hope you enjoyed. Cheers.